What's up? This is your girl, El Shaddai, with news as it happens. I just wanted to go right into this today because yesterday I was talking about Saudi Arabia's oil facility that was blown up by the Houthis, by Iran. This seems to be more like a fit that they are throwing because Trump canceled the peace talks. Because why? Because they won't stop killing people and blowing things up. Let's go into this article. Saudi crisis, Iran's supreme leader says no talks with U.S. during U.N. visit, which is scheduled for later this month. Iranian Supreme Leader Alatoya Al-Khamenei says Iran will hold no talks at any level with the U.S., blaming the Trump administration for requiring too many conditions. Hmm. Just maybe we're asking you to stop killing people. Is that too much for you? Apparently so. The U.S.-Iran talks had been mentioned as a possibility during the upcoming U.N. General Assembly in New York. The statement comes as U.S. officials accuse Iran of playing a role in Saturday's attack on oil facilities in Saudi Arabia, an attack that was claimed by Iranian-backed Houthi rebels in Yemen. The U.S. administration has pursued a maximum pressure campaign against Iran that seeks to force it to abandon its nuclear pr program and make other changes. I don't think that that's really much to ask for, okay? These are evil people. According to the official Islamic Republic News Agency, Khamenei says it's vital for Iran to prove the strategy has absolutely no value. If the current U.S. campaign succeeds, Khamenei says Iran should then expect to face more maximum pressure policies from the international community. Even after Trump took a threatening tone towards Iran over the attack in Saudi Arabia, advisors to President Trump said over the weekend that a meeting between Trump and the Iranian president, Hassan Rouhani, was still possible. Iran's leader has now ruled that out, saying Iran would only speak to the Americans if the U.S. backs off and repents and implements the nuclear deal from which they have withdrawn. Backs off and repents. <sighs> such strange words coming from such a horrid, horrid country who kills, maims, blows up. And uh, I'm really hoping here that Trump's not going to be backing off because this is seriously, seriously a problem. We're going to go ahead and watch a video as to what the sanctions might look like and to see what he is planning to do. He has national security implications. How likely is it that the president actually might be changing his position on Iran? Well, I, I think that the big question there is what the president's position was in the first place. He has always wanted a meeting with the Iranian president, Hassan Rouhani, uh, because that really plays into sort of his brand of, of personal diplomacy and believing that inserting himself into these negotiations uh, and looking a foreign leader in the eye can produce uh, breakthroughs. And what you're seeing here, I think, uh, is an expectation that if sanctions are eased, it would be potentially the waivers that, that Alex mentioned, so allowing some oil exports uh, as part of a French proposal uh, to grant Iran a $15 billion credit line to buy some goods. I don't think what you'd be seeing is a, is a wholesale lifting of the sanctions because despite all this talk, the, the underpinning of the U.S. approach toward Iran is that this maximum pressure campaign it's engineered over the last year or so is exactly the thing that is going to uh, persuade Iran to come to the negotiating table. We also have with us Will Kennedy, our colleague over in London. So, Will, listening to all of this and assuming that it is exactly as reported, how likely is it really that President Trump would be backing down off of his demand about an expanded agreement with Iran? Or more to the point, how likely it is it that President Rouhani would actually go along with some of the restrictions on, for example, ICBMs on things like support for Hezbollah? Uh, the Iranians uh, won't back down easily. They will uh, be tough negotiators. But it's important to bear in mind, as Alex was saying earlier, how much these sanctions have hurt the Iranian economy. And um, 
how uh, much they're missing that oil revenue. More than one and a half million barrels a day of oil um, is, and they would dearly, dearly love to be able to sell that oil again and get their economy back on track. Um, they will push for a very similar deal to the one that they had under Obama, the ones that the European is trying, Europeans are trying to keep going. They will argue that they, until recently, they had never breached the terms of that deal and that it was agreed. Um, so they won't give in easily, but they have every incentive to try and reach some accommodation <coughs> if Trump is serious about it. I also want to point out, too, that uh, if we just pretend this out for a second and if there was going to be a real sanction lift uh, I would propose that you would see oil prices down anywhere between 10 and 20 dollars a barrel. Uh, Bank of America Merrill Lynch uh, Francisco Blanche said that even if China decided to forget the U.S. and buy Iranian oil that's the kind of move you could see in the market. So yes I get it two percent the the line goes down doesn't look good but if it was a real rollback of full sanctions uh, the move would be much more dramatic and much bigger. But, but Nick Watt is down in Washington. Uh, this is been as an, an incredibly important part of President Trump's basic claim that the deal with Iran was a bad deal. It wasn't extensive enough. Talk about the politics for a minute. Could President Trump back down off of that? Doesn't he need to deliver that? And it's exactly what, forget President Rouhani, uh, Khamenei does not want. Right. I mean, there's a lot of question about what an actual deal would look like that President Trump would be satisfied. It could be uh, a new version of the negotiations over NAFTA 2.0, uh, in which you really saw a, a nip and a tuck of the existing deal. The president then went out and said that it was a major overhaul of NAFTA, but really the changes were pretty incremental. So I think what you're seeing with the JCPOA is the expectation that if the U.S. makes any sort of demand and makes headway on a new deal, it would not be a fundamental overhaul and total reimagining of the deal. It would uh, potentially extend some limits on the time in which Iran would be allowed uh, to, uh, or would not be allowed to enrich uranium above a certain point, new limits on its missile programs, and other restrictions, perhaps more access into its uh, nuclear facilities and capabilities that the president would then be able to take to the public before the election coming up next year and say, look, I was able to make significant progress. Uh, and then, of course, there would then be a huge debate about whether that was actually the case and whether the deal was really new or just a little bit of a change. Holy sh All right. So going back to this, I think personally, this is just Iran throwing a fit. I do believe that they did attack the Saudi oil facility because the Saudi Arabia was getting ready to put forth a new company. I believe it was called Aramco, if that's how you say it. And Saudi Arabia <clears throat> only produces 5% of the world's oil, but they were getting ready to put forth a private company. Therefore, with the sanctions on Iran, the canceled peace talks because of what they're doing is basically pushing them into a corner. They are now kicking and screaming, throwing fits. I guess we're going to have to see what happens. Uh, this is definitely something to keep your eye on is Iran. Will they be dethroned? Will they be taken out? Will they go into this agreement? Uh, I don't biblically really don't see a choice as we know that the one world system is going to happen. How this happens being able to watch this play out. This is going to be interesting. We already know we're going to have a one world government system taking over. This will last for five months. The first part will be the political beast. The second part will be religious. This will be definitely interesting to see how this all plays out. I also do want to mention, don't forget, today is the Israeli elections. It looks like Benny Gantz and Benjamin Netanyahu are neck and neck. We will definitely be keeping our eye out on that for today. This is your girl, El Shaddai, with the news as it happens. I am out.